Hello people, in this video, let us look at this very important topic, itching in pregnancy, especially of the palm and sole. Okay, so if uh, you see a third trimester uh, pregnant woman having this kind of itching on the palms and soles, okay, uh, she can be having obstetric cholestasis, which is very uh, important. Um, uh, it is very important to know it. Uh, this is called as intrahepatic cholestasis of pregnancy. Intrahepatic means within the liver, there is bile acid um, uh, uh, stasis, okay, cholestasis uh, of uh, this happens in pregnancy. So, it is called as ICP. So, basically, this is a very rare condition and uh, it is uh, so rare that obstetricians miss it and uh, cause death of the fetus, okay. And then they just wash off their hands also. So, this is a real life example. So, first baby ended in stillbirth and second pregnancy they caught it and they were able to, uh, a better obstetrician was able to understand these symptoms and treat the patient. So, <clears throat> remember there is a fetal mortality can be there, uh, uh, fetal distress, low birth weight, preterm birth, meconium stain like a stillbirth, okay. So, the worst happened in the first pregnancy leading to what? Stillbirth, okay. The first uh, pregnancy ended in stillbirth. So, what was this initially? Pruritus, that is itching of palms and soles, leading then some uh, uh, some bleeding kind of tendency. Then fetal movements were increased and uh, then fetal movements were very much decreased, indicating fetal distress and then there was stillbirth in the first pregnancy. What happened in the second pregnancy? Uh, went to a different uh, uh, obstetrician. That person was given the history of this itching, etc., and she at 28 weeks knew that this is a case of obstetric cholestasis, monitored the bile acid levels and treated the patient uh, and then delivered the baby with, delivered the baby. Okay, so it's a happy baby came out at the end. So this baby, the only thing was there was, it was meconium stain lyco. Okay, so you understood right so two different obstetricians the first one had no idea about this obstetric cholestasis so basically the typical presentation you should know itching and uh, later stage it will become this kind of uh, uh, hemorrhage kind of things okay just note okay there are many causes of pruritus in pregnancy okay we here are talking about this one acute cholestasis of pregnancy and uh, this is what we are talking about. So, we will not focus on the other conditions which cause itching. Okay, we will look at cholestasis of pregnancy. Shall we get started? Very good. So, basically, cholestasis means what? There is an interference of bile flow. Okay, cholestasis means what? There is an interference in the bile flow. So, let me draw a liver here. Liver is already there, right? Okay, bring the liver here. So, this guy liver, now what will happen? He produces bile. Now, this bile, it is not able to exit. Okay, so what will happen? It is staying here, the stasis of this bile. So, this is the cholestasis. Okay, so there is interference of uh, bile flow and there is no liver injury at this time. And who is the cause? Estrogen. Whom are you going to blame? Estrogen. I am we'll blame estrogen. Very good. We will blame estrogen. Okay, so estrogen is there in pregnancy. They are saying in contraceptives, any other therapy people are taking with estrogen. Also, this can happen. Remember, there is no biliary disease, there is no liver injury that has happened. Okay. So, now we are coming here. So, basically, where is the bile? The bile acid, bile acid, bile acid, read this statement here. Failure of the bile acid transport across the hepatocyte membrane. That means within the liver, there is bile acid, bile acid, bile acid, bile acid. So, there could also be a physical obstruction of this uh, bile duct, okay. So, why is it happening? Because of estrogen. How exactly this obstruction, etc., etc., that they have not told actually, okay. So, in this, these people, this is an intrahepatic condition. Remember, we told you it is intrahepatic, and uh, here there can be elevation of the alkaline phosphatase enzyme. Okay, and what else is elevated? Very important to know bile acid. Bile acid is elevated. Very good, people. Now, what is the cause? Cause is estrogen, ma'am. Very good. It could also be genetic, familial, abnormal progesterone metabolism. People who take contraceptive pills, estrogen pills, etc. Okay. Very good. So, what is more? Bile acid is more. There could be raised bile, conjugated bilirubin also in these people. So, that is what? What is that? Jaundice. Very good. But it will be a very mild jaundice in these people. So, like I told you, the jaundice is slight. There may be some weakness, nausea, even vomiting. There will be extreme tiredness after some time. Very tired the people will feel. Okay. 
okay now uh, now let us go on to the next level okay next level is what lab testing okay we are moving on to lab testing are you there with us okay so lab test what will you do we already told you you will check the levels of bile acid and also you will do liver function test in which what will you see raised alkaline phosphatase levels can be there but I, what you have to focus on is in the bile acid please acid 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 remember you have to check the bile acid levels okay this is what will give you the clear picture of is it obstetric cholestasis or not kind of a thing okay then so we told you here um, uh, cholestasis means what is that the alp is more alkaline phosphatase look at this okay i'm sorry i zoomed it a little too much just wait look at this so in cholestasis look at this the alp triple high arrow they have put right here so the alkaline phosphatase is more okay then what are we talking about obstetric cholestasis or intrahepatic cholestasis of pregnancy you call icp okay so here the bile acid level <clears throat> is more not the bilirubin they are not saying bilirubin it's the bile acid that is the specific measure and diagnosis monitoring of icp what will you ask the patient to come in um, uh, you'll ask the patient to come in for a bile acid uh, blood test okay so it is i think you can ask them just to come uh, in the next day or something it's not that emergency that you have to check for bile acid but if the fetal movement is reduced or increased or such distress then you will have to immediately look at it okay then <clears throat> this is the actual patient's um, uh, uh, data so look at this uh, bile acid was around 63 very very high okay and um, after the treatment this bile acid levels went on lowering okay it became less and then the baby was delivered also uh, normally okay so basically bile acid levels have to be monitored okay that is lab investigation when you are writing you should write everything others that you can do is a liver biopsy but we don't do what they are saying is if you do a liver biopsy you will see that the hepatocytes are perfectly fine there is no necrosis or anything but you will see cholestasis that is bile acid inside the liver that's what they are saying okay don't go and do liver biopsy and all that okay then you will rule out other causes how will you rule out other causes maybe you will need an ultrasound or uh, to rule out uh, cholelithiasis that is gallstones etc and you will have to rule out viral hepatitis autoimmune liver disease any drugs that the patient is taking so i will just show you the other things that you can rule out okay fine right good next here see they are talking about eclampsia also so some peculiar uh, pregnant uh, states that's what they are saying even in eclampsia preeclampsia all this can be there okay even hyperemesis gravidarum can have this then disseminated intravascular coagulation dic endotoxic shock then acute fatty liver all these things in pregnancy especially they are saying peculiar to pregnancy all this can be there you will have to rule out all this okay now we are done with lab investigations people take a nice break super now let's go to treatment okay here is the treatment arso deoxycholic acid arso deoxycholic acid one tablet would have saved the baby one tablet or whatever dose that is twice daily they are saying ha huh? 250 mg twice daily could have saved the baby okay sorry i was moving the screen so much now let's move so you can also give rifampicin if this udc is ineffective so that's why they was mo they were monitoring the bile the vitamin a you will give if there's abnormal clotting like this you can it was there all over the body okay and all that the doctor did the first obstetrician no clapping no clapping go here the first obstetrician what did they do nothing they said you have psychiatric issues go to a psychiatrist which was really painful for the patient okay then what should you give vitamin k to uh, if this clotting is abnormal etc and you can also give um, creams uh, creams to have the soothing effect on the pruritus okay so this is the treatment we are doing the treatment so basically prothrombin time should be monitored they are saying but the, if it is not and if the person has bleeding tendency what will you give vitamin k very good then if the patient has pruritus what and all that is itching what and all will you give emollients chlorpheniramine cholecystramine uvb early delivery also you can do okay cholecystramine is going to help in the itching vitamin k will reduce the hemorrhage and uh, even to the neonate you should give vitamin k arso deoxycholic acid is found to be helpful we already told you it will help how will this arso deoxycholic acid help arso deoxycholic acid help is going to help how 
by removing the bile acid okay it is going to help in excretion excretion increases the bile acid excretion that was that's what is important and uh, it will also improve pruritus but it will not help in the fetal outcome it has not been shown to help the fetal outcome they are saying okay okay so uh, if they uh, once they have delivered you have to follow up with them uh, you have to do bile acid test you have to not give them oral contraceptive pills because why 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 because they have estrogen estrogen so maybe you know, these people are good candidates for that progesterone only pill right what do you say then these people will require lifelong follow up for all these conditions okay recurrence is very high subsequent pregnancies they are going to have these problems again they are saying let's come to the last part of this just one question and one answer so there's a woman who has obstetric cholestasis what is the correct statement her risk in subsequent pregnancies is increased is the correct answer well let's look at why the others are wrong answer because i've already highlighted she should be started on or so deoxycholic acid to reduce the risk of stillbirth she should be started on this drug but will it reduce the risk of stillbirth no she needs a cesarean section not required you can do normal vitamin k is contraindicated no 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 give vitamin k you should monitor okay then you should admit her to hospital for observation only if there is fetal distress and if there's increased fetal movement or decreased fetal movement or any other condition otherwise this is just a tablet treatment okay so women with obstetric cholestasis are likely to experience obstetric cholestasis in the future pregnancies udca may improve her symptoms but there's no evidence that it will have any better fetal outcome there is no indication for cesarean section or admission based on the diagnosis and the information given here it doesn't look like she needs an admission vitamin k should be given to correct coagulopathy excellent you have completed this uh, video on obstetric cholestasis intrahepatic cholestasis of pregnancy i hope every obstetrician every psychiatrist every dermatologist every general medicine doctor knows that in future if a lady comes pregnant with itching in the palms and soles or any kind of bleeding tendency like this please check her bile acid levels and give her or so d oxy cholic acid <laughs> bye bye